Now, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is your tutor of entrepreneurship, Professor Henry Buis of Joma Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Today, I want to talk about uh, stakeholders. Stakeholder analysis is normally um, a topic under project management. But my experience and my practices have shown that indeed uh, you can use stakeholder, stakeholder analysis in many other uh, various ways. So this is uh, uh, my talk to my project management students, but it equally applies to even people in business and in any uh, other field as you will filter from what I'm going to talk about. Now, there is something called uh, stakeholder theory. This theory stresses the interconnected relationships between a business and its customers, suppliers, employees, investors, communities, and others who have a stake in the organization. The theory argues that a firm should create value for all stakeholders, not just shareholders. Now, stakeholder analysis, as I said, is a tool taught in project management to analyze those who have stakes in the project and how to involve them for the success of the project. But wait a minute, what's a project? Yes, without going into the project management jargon, a project can be defined as a specific finite activity that produces an observable and measurable result. Now, some examples of projects are, you know, developing a new product or service, Yes, when Samsung goes on bringing in new gadgets, new Samsungs, those are projects. Constructing a building or a facility. When you build your house, when you build your shop, when you construct and structure, that's a project. Renovating that kitchen of yours, that's a project. Arranging for a wedding, a wedding is a project. Pursuing a degree, if you are a student listening to me, that degree of yours is a project. Designing a new curriculum. Yes, recently we had in Kenya the competence-based curriculum was designed and it is now being implemented. Campaigning for an election. Yes, as I do this video, there are campaigns, Matungu in Kapchai, you know, those are projects. Campaigning for an election is a project. Implementing a new business process. Yes, when you are introducing a new process in your hotel, in your, that is a project. Planning to start a family business. Elsewhere in this uh, channel of mine, I've talked about family businesses. Yes, when you plan to start family business, that's a project. Yes, look, you can see uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and his wife, First Lady, opening an SGR project, the Standard God Railway. Yes, you can see here Maasai women building a house well, in some cultures, like my own culture, a woman cannot uh, climb the roof of, um, of any house. But here, cultures um, uh, differ. So these two Maasai women are building the house, their, their hut. This is a project. So think of anything else, therefore. Projects, anything that has a beginning and an end, an activity that you start, it has finite period, it spends resources, takes time, that's a project. 
So every project has stakeholders. Stakeholders are all the people or even organizations that are somehow affected by a project. The obvious stakeholders are the project team and all staff contributing to the project. But the less obvious ones are those who are going to feel the impact of the project. They may be suppliers because the project is having an indirect impact on the purchasing process and others, e.g. customers are also, you know, uh, stakeholders. Another important subgroup of stakeholders are those folks who have to approve what you are doing. Let's say you want to build your residential house within a municipality. Oh, yes, you will need to approve. You'll need approvals from local authorities. Those are stakeholders. So again, you can see stakeholders come in all shapes and sizes. A company has both internal stakeholders and external stakeholders. Internal stakeholders are employees, the manager, the owners. But the external stakeholders, suppliers, society, government, creditors, shareholders, customers, yes, all these groups have an interest one way or another in a company. The company deals with them in one way or another, stakeholders. Let's say you have one, a core issue. You want to do something. We have the first layer. We call them primary stakeholders. These are people who are directly affected by whatever core issue, whatever project that you want to, uh, to start. The second layer is secondary stakeholders. These people indirectly affected, are indirectly affected. If the primary ones are directly affected, direct beneficiaries, then second stakeholders are those that are indirectly affected or indirect beneficiaries. Then there is the tertiary uh, stakeholders. These are those who influence things that go on within the project. So we, have, we can call, we can classify stakeholders in those direct, very near to the issue, secondary and tertiary. Let's say the issue is forest policy reform. We want to reform the forest policy. In Kenya, we have had things like the Mao forest. Elsewhere in Brazil, there are those forests, you know, protecting the forest. Our late Nobel Prize winner, Wangari Matai, was very keen on uh, policies that affect forests. So if we have the forest policy reform, then the primary stakeholders, those that are directly affected, will be like the watershed farmers, the logging company owners and their workers, and people who are directly affected by that policy reform. The second rule will be traditional authorities, farm laborers, furniture makers, forest produce users, etc. etc. If I use a product from the forest, yes, I will not be as directly affected as the farmer who actually depends on the forest or the locking company which again also directly depends on the forest then we shall have the tertiary stakeholders such as universities because of they do research around institutions politicians so you can see these 
are layers of stakeholders related to one single policy. Let's talk of curriculum reform. Yes, in Kenya we have had curriculum reform. We have now CBC, competence-based curriculum. The primary stakeholders in this will be the teachers, the learners, the parents. They are directly affected. Later on, we shall be asking what they really involved and therefore is the project a success or is it struggling to succeed? Then the secondary, those who are indirectly affected, the administrators in the schools, the communities, the unions, teachers' unions and, so, and all that. In Kenya, we saw the debate, the fierce debate that went on between the leader of the teachers' union and the minister, who is actually, so to speak, a tertiary uh, stakeholder, the government agencies, development partners. So you see, we are therefore saying that once you have identified these stakeholders, then you design the involvement in the project. You may ignore one thing that is not important, but in the long run, it can be feel that involvement would have been better, the project would have been, uh, would have implemented in a better way. So, like we said, the primary stakeholders have the highest level of interest in the outcome of a project because they are directly affected by the outcome. They actively contribute to a project. These types of stakeholders include the customers and even the team leaders in a project. Second stakeholders also help to complete projects but on a lower or general level. These types of stakeholders help with administrative processes, financial and legal matters. Then the tertiary stakeholders are influencers of decisions and are important for they can be lobbied for decision making. So categorizing them and identifying who they are will make it easier for involvement of the same. Some different types of stakeholders. We have suppliers, taking a, a business, suppliers, owners, investors, creditors, communities, trade unions, employees, government agencies, customers, all that. You can pause this uh, video and look, go around this uh, diagram. We have customers, users, investors, shareholders, partners, media, the press, public authorities, governments, trade groups, community groups, protesters, competitors, special interest groups, charities, and so on and so forth. We are not saying that every project will have all these uh, stakeholders, but this is like a menu, a buffet for you. Depending on what project you are doing, you have to, you can be guided to select which are your stakeholders and categorize them, whether they are primary, secondary, or tertiary. Now, lest we confuse stakeholders with shareholders. Look, stakeholders is the larger cycle. Shareholders, which you call the stockholders, are the smaller cycle. So, stakeholders hold a stake in an organization and are affected by its activities, whether positively or negatively. Shareholders hold a share in an organization and they therefore have ownership of the company. They are also affected by its activities. So we can say all shareholders are stakeholders, but not all stakeholders are shareholders. So let's not confuse the terms stakeholder and shareholder. So what is the purpose of a stakeholder analysis? The key one that 
come to your mind should be one you do stakeholder analysis to enlist the help of key organizational players number two to gain early alignment among all stakeholders on goals and plans like i said we had a lot of debate over the introduction of the competence-based curriculum because not enough stakeholder analysis was done to gain early alignment among all stakeholders on goals and plans. In Kenya, had even the Tiomin project at the cost, it took almost nine years to start because of not comprehensive stakeholders to gain early alignment among all stakeholders took some time. The third reason we do stakeholder analysis to help address conflicts or issues early on. Yes, many projects face conflicts, face issues. If you have not done your stakeholder analysis early enough and comprehensive enough, those conflicts can remain and they can mar can disturb the progress of the project. Stakeholder analysis is used to identify stakeholders and analyze their needs to develop and deliver a quality product in the first attempt. It includes collecting qualitative information to determine which stakeholder interest should be examined. The purpose of performing stakeholder analysis is to have a strategic view of various possible stakeholder issues. You can see it is really important that we do stakeholder analysis. However, rudimentary, but advisably, we should be a comprehensive, comprehensive stakeholder analysis for any project that we want to introduce. It helps. Now, you can use a power interest grid to identify and interact with stakeholders. Look, we can ha um, stakeholders can have an interest in a project at a various degrees, low or high. Stakeholders can also have an influence or power in a project. So, when the interest is high and the influence is also high that is a key player manage that player closely involve them in projects and decisions engage on a regular basis and work to maintain that relationships when the interest is high but the power is low keep informing the stakeholders make sure of interest through involvement consult on their uh, sides of um, status of interest it can they can easily be your supporters your ambassadors now when the power is very high but the interest is low try to meet their needs engage and consult increase maintenance level of interest aim at moving them to the right making them become key players and if the interest is low in the project the power is low these are low priority stakeholders but they should not be ignored monitor communicate generally to keep updated aim at moving them to the right so that they get keeping informed. You can see what we are saying that don't leave out any stakeholder. Let them on, be on board. They will be useful in their own various degrees. You can also use a general matrix to design a stakeholder engagement strategies. Look, we have this row this row across the top row out here you do our stakeholder category you list 
your stakeholders, primary, secondary, tertiary, and other like competitors. You list them along this column. The second column, you think of the impact. How much does the project impact them? It can be low, medium, or high. It's normally useful to do this in a brainstorming session, in a group, in a workshop, etc., etc. The third column, influence. How much influence do they have on the project? You have identified the stakeholders. How much influence may they have? Is it low, medium, high? Indicate that. The next column, what is important to the stakeholder? We said, get data, information. Ask these people what is important to them. If you're bringing in a new curriculum, ask the parents, ask the pupils. Unfortunately, in many countries, those key stakeholders are ignored. The next column, how could the stakeholder contribute to the project? Yes. Investigate, interview, see their interest. How can they contribute to the project? I know schools, rural Kenya have been there, where parents may not have fees, but they, they can contribute in kind. They can bring timber for building. They can bring uh, greens, food, grains for the dining hall. So how could stakeholder contribute to the project? It's very important to get up that. The next column, how could the stakeholder block the project? Yes, he could be a competitor. Think of how he might block the project. He could be someone from a different political camp. If you have not identified how they can block the project, you might go by surprise. As they say, pants down. But if you have identified how they may block the project, then your last column becomes clear. How best can we involve the stakeholder? Whether it's going to block or the interest or, you know, interest is very high. Yes. How can we involve them? Can they be partners? Can they be financiers? You know, can they be suppliers? Can they be consultants? Can we work together? So, you have your categories of stakeholders. And for each, you have identified uh, all these issues and therefore it becomes easier to lay down your strategy strategy of how you are going to involve them it is advisable never to leave any out of the board there are those who are contributing positively know how to engage them there are those who are blockers we have seen companies even merge you know, because the competition may be too high, but you find that merging and working together, joint ventures, partnerships, might be better than leaving them out of the tray. So this is how your stakeholder analysis can help you. In conclusion, we pose a question. Who is the most important stakeholder of them all. Yes, Peter Drucker, sometimes called father of modern management, answered that in this statement. The purpose of a business is to create and keep a customer. That will therefore mean that the customer is a very important stakeholder taking care of the customer. If you talk about schools, let's say, who is the customer? 
Is it not the pupils? Is it not those paying fees? Is it not the parents? And therefore, if they are the customers, then we are advised by the guru of management that that customer is very important. Mahatma Gandhi taught us about the importance of a customer. A customer is the most important visitor on our premises. So advised Mahatma Gandhi, 1890. He is not dependent on us. No, the customer is not dependent on us. We are dependent on him. I have been in banks and I see people as they withdraw their money. They then thank the teller, thank you. It should be the other, the other way around. The bank should be saying thank you to those customers for giving them an opportunity. Let's go on. See what Matt McCann said. He says, the customer is not an interruption in our work. He is the purpose of it. The customer is not an outsider in our business. He is part of it. We are not doing him a favor by serving him. He is doing us a favor by giving us an opportunity to do so. So, you are in business. That is the importance of the customer. In church, in the mosque, who is the customer? Think about that. At school, who are the customers? Universities, who are the customers? Are they not those students? Can we not avoid strikes? Can we not avoid riots and unrest if we dealt with the customer appropriately? And how many organizations do so? Even in their strategic planning, in the vision and the mission statement, the employee who is supposed to be internal customer is never considered. And for that matter, the customer is both external and internal. Look, the voice of the customer. Inside the organization, there are those customer relations from department to department. If this internal customer is not satisfied, it is this internal customer that produces the product that goes to the external customer. So here we have external customer and internal customer. So what are we saying? When internal customers who are employees are no longer motivated to come to work, companies get less than 100% of their energy, focus, and creativity and your profitability, even reputation, will suffer. But when the external customer or the product buying customer is not satisfied with the product or services, then your earnings take a hit. So, customers are extremely important stakeholders. Various customers, various organizations, and unfortunately, not many companies, not many organizations, not many governments consider the customers as important. So stakeholder analysis will help you come up with those issues and strategize on how to deal with them and therefore how to run smoothly. Select your stakeholders well. Analyze them well. Won't you? Thank you for listening. Watch this space. We shall bring you more.